Creatine is one of the most popular supplements in the entire world. You'll see it on the shelves at gyms, health stores, and online, marketed to athletes, bodybuilders, and even students looking for a brain boost. Some call it the most researched supplement ever. But with all the hype comes confusion. Is creatine just for bodybuilders? Does it really make you stronger? And what about the rumors that it causes kidney damage, cramps, or dehydration? Here's what you need to know. Creatine isn't a steroid. It isn't dangerous for healthy people. And it's not just about building bigger muscles. In fact, your body makes creatine naturally and you use it every single day to power your muscles and your brain. In this episode, we're going to break down what creatine actually is, how it works, the proven benefits, the myths you can ignore, and exactly how to take it safely. And stay with me until the very end because I'll share one surprising benefit of creatine that has nothing to do with the gym and it may completely change the way you think about this supplement. So what exactly is creatine? Well, medically speaking, creatine is a natural compound that's made in your liver, kidneys, and pancreas. Your body also also gets creatine from foods like red meat and fish. Once made or consumed, it's stored mostly in your muscles as phosphocreatine, a quick access form of energy. And about 95% of all the creatine in your body is in your skeletal muscles, while the remaining 5% is stored in your brain and other tissues. Its job is simple but powerful. Creatine helps your cells recycle and regenerate ATP, the molecule that fuels almost every process in your body. ATP is like the energy current of life, but your muscles can only store a tiny amount of it. Creatine acts like a rechargeable battery pack, ready to step in when your muscles need quick energy. That's why creatine is especially useful for activities that require short, intense bursts of effort, like sprinting, weightlifting, or jumping. Think of ATP as the cash in your wallet. You only carry a little with you generally, and when it runs out, you need to refill it. Creatine is like having an instant transfer app on your phone. It quickly refills your wallet so you can keep paying without stopping. So creatine isn't foreign or unnatural. Your body already uses it every day. Supplementing it just means you're topping off your natural stores so your muscles and your brain have a little more backup energy when they need it most. Now that we know what creatine is, let's talk about how it actually works inside your body. ATP is your body's energy currency. Every movement you make from blinking your eyes to running a sprint requires energy in the form of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. The problem is your muscles only store enough ATP for about two to three seconds of maximum effort. After that, you need to regenerate ATP to get going. Creatine is the backup battery. This is where creatine comes in. In your muscles, creatine is stored as phosphocreatine. When ATP runs low, phosphocreatine donates its phosphate group to ADP, adenosine diphosphate, instantly turning it back into ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This means more fuel for short, explosive movement like lifting weights, sprinting, or jumping. Now let's talk a little bit about how supplementation helps. By taking creatine, you increase your muscles' phosphocreatine stores. That gives you a larger backup battery so you can perform at a higher intensity for slightly longer. Over time, this translates to more reps in the gym, faster recovery between sprints, and ultimately, greater strength and muscle gains. Remember, about 5% of creatine is stored in the brain. Just like muscles, brain cells need ATP for quick energy. So creatine may also support mental performance, especially under stress or fatigue. Imagine you're running a phone on a weak battery. Without backup, it dies after a couple of hours. Creatine is like carrying a portable power bank. It doesn't charge the phone itself, but it keeps you running longer before you run out of juice. So in simple terms, ATP is the energy, creatine is the backup, and supplementation means you've always got an extra charge in reserve. Creatine isn't just popular because of its hype. It's one of the most researched supplements in the world with hundreds of clinical trials, and the benefits are very clear. The most consistent finding is that creatine improves strength, power, and performance in resistance training. It helps you squeeze out a few extra reps or lift slightly heavier weights. Over weeks and months, those small gains add up to greater muscle size and strength. One of the other areas that's useful for creatine is short burst performance sports. These are sports that rely on repeated explosive movement. Sprinting, football, soccer, basketball, these are all great examples. Creatine helps you recover faster between efforts so you can perform better across multiple sprints or multiple sets. 
Creatine has also been shown to reduce muscle cell damage and inflammation after intense exercise. It may help with faster recovery, which means you can train harder and more consistently. Combined with strength training, it leads to greater muscle mass over time. Remember that about 5% of creatine is stored in your brain. Early research shows it may improve cognitive performance during stress, sleep deprivation, or intense mental tasks. Studies also suggest that creatine could support patients with neurological conditions like Parkinson's, Huntington's, or depression, though more research is definitely needed here. There are some benefits for older adults. Creatine isn't just for athletes. In older adults, it helps preserve muscle mass, strength, and balance, lowering the risk of falls and frailty. Here's a plain English analogy for you. Think of creatine like a performance booster pack. In the gym, it's that extra rep that adds up over time. On the field, it's the quicker recovery between plays, and in the brain, it's the reserve fuel that keeps you sharp under pressure. The key takeaway is that if there's one supplement that consistently delivers measurable results across both performance and health, it's creatine. With all the hype around creatine, it's no surprise that a lot of myths have been spread over the years. Let's clear up the most common ones right now. Myth number one, creatine damages your kidneys. This is the biggest fear people have, but it's not supported by science. Decades of studies in healthy adults show no evidence of kidney damage from creatine use at the recommended doses. The confusion comes because creatine raises creatinine levels in the blood, but that's a breakdown product, not actually kidney injury. Myth number two, is that creatine causes dehydration and cramps. Early rumors claimed creatine pulled water into the muscles, leaving the rest of your body dehydrated. But multiple studies have shown the opposite. Creatine users are actually less likely to cramp and may even be better hydrated since the muscles hold water more effectively. Myth number three is that creatine is a steroid. Absolutely false. Steroids are synthetic hormones. Creatine is a naturally occurring compound your body already makes and gets from food. Supplementing is just topping off your natural stores. Myth number four is that creatine is only for bodybuilders. Now, while athletes and lifters use it most, research shows benefits for older adults, vegetarians, and even people with neurological conditions. It's really a general performance and health supplement, not just a gym product. Think of creatine like protein powder. Some people think it's dangerous or only for athletes, but in reality, it's just a concentrated version of something your body already uses every day. The key takeaway is that creatine is safe, well-studied, and much more versatile than most people think. So let's get into the practical side. What kind of creatine should you take, how much, and is it safe? Well, the best form is creatine monohydrate. By far, this is the most studied and the most effective form. It's safe, it's affordable, and consistently shown to increase muscle creatine stores. Other versions, like creatine hydrochloride, ethyl ester, or liquid creatine, are often marketed as better absorbed, but research shows no clear advantage over monohydrate. The bottom line is, stick with creatine monohydrate. In terms of how much to take, you have two options. The loading phase is 20 grams per day, split into four doses for five to seven days, and then switch to three to five grams daily. This saturates your muscles faster. Then there's no loading. Simply take three to five grams daily from the start. It takes a few weeks longer to fully saturate your muscles, but the end result is exactly the same. Either way, consistency is key. Creatine works by building up in your system over time. It's not a one-time energy boost. In terms of timing, it doesn't matter much whether you take it before or after workouts. Many people take it with a meal since insulin may slightly improve uptake into the muscles. The most important thing is to take it daily. Creatine is one of the safest supplements ever studied with decades of data. There's no harm in healthy adults when taken at recommended doses. One common side effect is that you may see a small increase in body weight, about one to three pounds. This is from water stored in the muscles, not from fat accumulation. Here's a caution. Before taking any kind of supplement, it's best to talk to your doctor first. Please always do that. They know your medical history and what will work best for you. Think of creatine like topping off a fuel tank. You can fill it quickly, that's the loading phase, or slowly, daily maintenance. But either way, once the tank is full, you just need a little top up 
each day to keep it that way. Here's the key takeaway. The simplest, safest, and most effective approach is creatine monohydrate, three to five grams daily, long term. Creatine isn't just for young athletes trying to bulk up. Research shows several groups of people can benefit in very different ways. The first and most obvious group is athletes and strength trainers. This is pretty clear. Creatine consistently improves strength, power, and recovery in sports that rely on short, explosive bursts like weightlifting, sprinting, football, and basketball. The second group are vegetarians and vegans. Creatine is mostly found in animal-based foods like meat and fish, so studies show that vegetarians often have lower baseline creatine levels in their muscles and in their brains. Supplementation may give them an even bigger performance and cognitive boost compared to the meat eaters. The third group is older adults. Muscle mass and strength naturally decline with age, a process called sarcopenia. Creatine, combined with resistance training, helps older adults maintain muscle, strength, and balance. This reduces the risk of falls, fractures, and loss of independence. The fourth group is people with neurological conditions. Research is still emerging here. Early studies do suggest that creatine may help in conditions like Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, and depression. It also may be valuable in patients with traumatic brain injury. While it's not a cure, the idea is that creatine gives brain cells extra energy reserves, helping them function under stress. Think of creatine as an energy insurance policy. Athletes use it to push harder, vegetarians use it to fill a natural gap, older adults use it to stay strong, and researchers are even studying it as a lifeline for the brain. Creatine isn't just a bodybuilding supplement. It's one of the most versatile, safe, and widely beneficial nutrients studied today. So let's wrap this thing up. Creatine is one of the most studied supplements in the world. It's also one of the safest. It's not a steroid, and it doesn't damage healthy kidneys. And it's not just for bodybuilders anymore. We've covered what creatine is. It's a natural compound your body makes and stores in muscles and in the brain how it works by recharging ATP, your body's energy currency, the proven benefits, strength, power, recovery, muscle growth, and even potential brain support, the myths, no, it won't dehydrate you, and no, it's not dangerous for healthy adults, the best form and dosage, creatine monohydrate, three to five grams a day, taken consistently. Who benefits most? athletes, vegetarians, older adults, and possibly patients with neurological conditions. But of course, always check with your doctor or healthcare provider before starting any new supplement. And remember what I teased about at the beginning, the surprising use of creatine that has nothing to do with the gym? It's being studied for brain health. Early research shows creatine may help with cognition under stress, recovery from brain injuries, and even neurological diseases. It's not a replacement for treatment, but it's an exciting area of science that shows creatine's benefits go far beyond your muscles. If there's one supplement that truly lives up to the hype, it's creatine. Safe, effective, and powerful when used wisely. If you found this video helpful, share it with someone who's curious about supplements and let me know in the comments. Have you tried creatine? And if so, what did you notice? Don't forget to subscribe for more science-based health content because when it comes to supplements, the truth matters more than the hype. Dr. John Truback here. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.